Pastor Loudermilk from the Way of the Cross Church. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about our services and our service time and invite you to come and worship with us. We have many wonderful programs in place that would be a blessing to your family, our children's program, our teenage program, and, and the Bible studies and the church services that are geared for each member of your family. Way of the Cross Church is located at 612 Beatrice Drive in Riverside, Ohio. Riverside is a small community between Dayton and Huber Heights. Beatrice Drive is a connector street between Brant Pike and Harshman Road. The church is located again at 612 Beatrice Drive. Our service times are as follows. Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m., of course, our main service. We have service on Sunday evening at 6.30 and then our midweek Bible study for adults and teenagers and children of all ages is on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. I sincerely invite you to come and be part of these services, and God bless you as uh, you watch the program this evening. you some context let me give you some con can I take a few minutes to give you some context okay now I, listen I, I the, the flesh is the, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak so let me give you a little context okay all right it says and being assembled together with them he departed them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father which he said you have heard from me for John truly baptizes with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, okay, but he said, you, sh you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so a few verses went by in that chapter. We go to chapter 2. They were praying now. They were all in one accord, in one place, praying, and they, and, and they, were, they prayed for 10 days. They, they waited. They did what God told them to do, and they waited. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the 50th day since Passover, the 40th day since His resurrection, the 10th day since they began to pray, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Unity is important. You've got to lay aside, you've got to lay aside your strifes and your disagreements and you've got to focus on Jesus Christ. If you want the power... If you want the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, you cannot be at odds with people. You've got to love people. You've got to forgive people. They were all in one. So, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled the whole house where they were sitting. That's happened one time. That's never, to this point, that's never been repeated. I, it'd be great to hear it. It'd be great to hear that rushing mighty wind. To hear that suddenly. But it says, then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and one set upon each of them. Listen, we all have energy. We all have an aura. We all are constantly uh, just, uh, uh, we, are, uh, we are giving, and that's why you see somebody who is greatly inspired, there's a difference in the way they look. Or you see a mother who has life in her and she's going to give birth. You see a difference in the way she has a glow. She has a supernatural glow. We all have fire about us. But when the Holy Spirit comes on us, hallelujah. I'm telling you, he can light up your world. Amen. Amen. So there appeared unto them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused. You know, sometimes when you get a group of people together worshiping the power of the Holy Spirit, it'll confuse other people, okay? Everyone heard them speak in his own language. So we know that a miracle of language took place there that day, either a, either a miracle of speaking or a miracle of hearing, okay? So they were all amazed and they began to say, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? How is it we hear each in our own language in which we were born? It goes on to tell who they were. And it says, we hear them speaking in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying one to another. I'm going to stop right here. Others mocking said they're full of new wine. 
Yeah, yeah, they're full of new wine. They're, get, they're a little bit loose this morning. They're a little bit uh, inebriated this morning. But Peter, standing up with eleven, raised his voice and he said, No, 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 no. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose. <laughs> they were a little high. They just were high on something different than wine, okay? It says, these are not drunk as you suppose since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now, I want you to sit down just a moment. If you, if you can. If you can't, sit on the floor if you need to. I want you to sit down just for a moment. And I want, to, I want to say this to you. I, I, I felt that this needs to be said to you. Why you need the Holy Spirit in your life. Why you need the Holy Spirit in your life. Anybody interested? Anybody want to know why you need the Holy Spirit in your life? Number one, we need the Holy Spirit in our life because we are weak. We are weak. In ourselves, in our flesh, there dwells no good thing. There's nothing good in us. We are weak. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. We Listen, in, 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 in Romans chapter 7, Paul says, there's a law. There's two laws that are battling against me. One is a law of my mind and the flesh. And the other is a law of the spirit. The law of my flesh tells me I'm trying to do good. I'm seeking to do good. But evil is present. I find myself the things I want to do, I find I can't do them. And the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Who is going to deliver me? <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to deliver us. Because He said there is another law. There's the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus that's made me free from the law of sin and death. Listen, when the Holy Spirit fills us, when the Holy Spirit fills us, He gives us power. What did I read to you out of their acts? But Peter says, the, the, all these men said, what's wrong with these people? They're full of new wine. But Peter, Peter standing up, he said, oh no, these men are not drunk as you suppose. This is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. It had been a long time since Peter had stood up. The last time we really saw Peter on the stage, he was saying, I don't know him. In fact, blankety blank blank, I don't know him. And we, the last time we looked at Peter on the stage, he was crying bitterly. But here, all of a sudden, 40 days later, when the day of Pentecost, when the... Listen, Pentecost means the giving of the... In the Old Testament, on Pentecost, that's when God gave His law written on stone tablets. On the 50th day from the day they left Egypt, God gave His law written on stone tablets. But on this day, on this Pentecost, God gave His law written in your heart, written on your soul, written on your spirit. I want to tell you something. I love the Lord my God. I serve Him because I love Him. I preach because I believe in Him. Hallelujah. He come to set you free, to make you free indeed. So I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to preach this whole sermon to you today. I'm just, going to, I'm just going to say to you one reason, one very important reason that you need the Holy Spirit in your life overflowing, filled in your life is that we are weak and without Him we can do nothing. But with Him, woo, with Him, hallelujah, we can do all things. I looked at my gallery this morning. I looked at my pictures. I didn't even know what I was doing it for. I just was, I'd been up a while and I'd done everything else I thought I needed to do. So I looked at my gallery of pictures and I'd taken a picture of my little grand... I, you know, if, if, you, if you're tired of hearing about my grandson, you better not come to church because I'm going to be talking about him. So, like, He took a picture of him. And he was standing, he was kind of leaning like on the couch like this. And like, he's looking at me and he's holding a cup in his hand. It's like, look, Grandpa, look, Poppy, I'm standing. I, and he says, all by myself. Almost. Almost. Because the truth of it is nobody stands by themselves. But there is one, hallelujah, 
that the Bible says, Jesus said in John 14, 26, John 15, 26, and John 16, verses 9 through 16, he said, when the helper has come. When the helper has come. Hallelujah. I want you to know I've got a helper in my life, and you do too. And, and actually, the Greek word there is the, is the word parakletos. Parakletos, which means the one who stands alongside of you and helps you. Hallelujah. The one who stands alongside of you and helps you. I was out in my yard the other day taking my little grandson for a walk, and I walked by a tree, a dogwood tree that Vivian had given me. And, and when I first planted it, it started to grow crooked. But I took a stake and I drove it down and I tied that tree up to that stake. And I looked at it the other day, and that tree is growing straight and tall because there's something standing along beside it. I want you to know that the Spirit of God will stand alongside of you. And he'll be your helper. He'll be your parakletos. He'll make a way for you. You need him. But he's a gentleman. He's a gentleman. And he's not going to force his way on you in any way. He's going to say, I'm here. And listen, listen, you don't have to be like anybody else to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I I wrote a section down here this morning. I just felt inspired and I wrote this down. In fact, I think I'll just read it to you. I just think I'll read it to you. One of the reasons that I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit is I want to worship in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are many evidences of the Holy Spirit presence. On this occasion, Acts chapter 2, they spoke in languages they had not learned, or at least they spoke in what 1 Corinthians 14 calls the unknown tongue, and people present heard it in their language. That could mean several things. One, it could mean that the gospel is universal for everybody. Hallelujah. And that there's no language or tongue anywhere throughout this earth that God is not interested in moving in and transforming. Or or else, or or it could mean that the gift of tongues is the essential language of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. You might speak in the tongue of men or of angels. Okay? So it could be that there there is a spiritual language for spiritual beings. Language of the soul. Or it could be that some emotions are so powerful, Romans 8, 26, that it's impossible to fully express them without utterings and groanings and words that you cannot articulate, but they are emotions that have to come out some way. So, I'm not saying, what's my point in saying all this is you don't have to do anything anybody else is doing. What you have to do is submit yourself unto God. And you have to say, Lord, fill me, Lord. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. I need the helper in my life. I need the parakletos alongside of me. It's uh, it's been my experience after 43 years of preaching here at this church, pastoring here at this church, it's been my experience that anyone who truly desires the gift of tongues can experience it. The Bible tells us to desire earnestly the best gift. And so the best gift is the one that God has for you to use. So it's been my experience that anybody who really wants to speak in tongues have the gift of tongues, that they can have it. But it's also been my experience that not every spirit, Christ, spirit-filled Christian necessarily speaks in tongues or, or as evidence that the Holy Spirit is present. I believe that every person who truly receives Jesus as Lord and Savior is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. I think I get that from Romans chapter 8. But we can all have more of the Holy Spirit. How much more, it says in Luke 11, how much more, how many of you need more? Come on now, I'm serious. How many of you need more than what you got? How many of you, you've been, you, 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 you know, listen, being filled with the Holy Spirit is not an incident that happened sometime in, in past history. I remember when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, my brother, my brother was baptized in the Holy Spirit before I was. And, you know, I I went home from church one night after we had had a meeting somewhat similar to this. And I was so, I was so discouraged because I felt called to preach. I'd done everything I could to get ready to preach. I'd quit cussing. I'd quit smoking. I'd quit doing everything I could to do. But I still felt, I still felt I needed more. And I remember that I got down in the floor in my hallway and I said, Lord, I'm not getting up from here till I receive this gift that I desire. And that's what happened. I want to tell you this is for you and your children and as many as are far off, as many as the Lord God shall call. But the filling of the Holy Spirit is evidenced in many ways. It can be spiritual gifts. It can be be a, a supernatural joy. 
In fact, that's one. But the greatest evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is when we begin to love one another and we begin to love God and we begin to operate. Now, love is not, love is not, a, love is not a, a noun. Love is not just something you talk about. Love is something that you do. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us all about that in 1 Corinthians 13. And being filled with the Holy Spirit is when the love of God and the love of people begins to just permeate your soul and your heart and your mind. And you're willing, if necessary, to die for somebody if you need to. Amen. Praise God. So anyway, I believe that every person who received Jesus as the Lord and Savior is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. But we can all have more of that Holy Spirit. Acts 6, 3 instructs the early church to seek out those who were full of the Holy Ghost and set them over church business. So it's important to seek to be filled and refilled with the Holy Spirit. There may be many signs of that filling, but the greatest evidence will be Christian love. Jesus said this is the way we will be known as his disciples. According to 1 Corinthians 13, gifts such as tongues and prophecy and knowledge, those are all spiritual gifts, but they're preempted by the presence of faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. There are, and so we want to be filled with the Spirit so we can walk in the Spirit. We can walk in love. And worship in the Spirit. Worshiping in the Spirit can mean that you might think you are a little weird. Worshiping in the Spirit might mean that, let me rephrase that, I didn't read that right. Worshiping in the Spirit might mean that some people might think you're a little weird. <laughs> well, see Acts 2, 12 and 13. And compare Ephesians 5, 15 through 20. But that doesn't mean we try to be weird for weird's sake. In fact, the whole reason for 1 Corinthians 14, Paul is giving his approval at speaking or praying in tongues, but he's also saying there are wise ways to do so as not to be viewed as only being weird. But when it's all said and done, if you are a person, if you are a person who is filled with the Holy Spirit, somebody's going to think you're weird. But that's okay. And it'll be okay if they, they won't mind you being weird if they know you love them. Amen. Amen. Won't you lift your hands and praise the Lord this morning? So let me summarize. Let me summarize. Let me just, I just, I want to conclude this. <laughs> I, I slipped a sermon in on you. It says, uh, I need the Holy Spirit in my life because I'm weak. I need the Holy Spirit in my life because I am called to be a witness. That's my calling. I'm not called to be a judge. I'm not called to be an executioner. I'm not called to, I'm not called to, uh, uh, to, uh, make the decision about where somebody's going or not going, I am called to be a witness that Jesus is alive. That Jesus is alive. And our friends, I know that Jesus is alive. I see people he's alive in. I know he's alive in his heaven, and he's alive in my heart. Hallelujah. Listen, I, what I think, I think because of what Jesus thinks. What I do, I try to do because this is what Jesus does. What I believe, I believe, is because this is what Jesus taught. Jesus is alive. Come on, church. And you, as his church, Bill, you were singing that song, this, the church is the hope. You, as the church, are the witness that Jesus Christ is alive. We have, listen, there are many infallible witnesses, and you are one of them. The church is one of them. The church of Jesus Christ is one of them. The church exists. The gates of hell are not going to prevail against the church. These are dark times, and there are some people that have lost their way, but not the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to triumph, and one of these days, we're going up in the power of the Holy Spirit. So you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because you don't want your feet to be stuck to this ground. There's going to come a time you're going to have to go up in Jesus name. Amen. Won't you give the Lord praise offering this morning? Give me a chance to touch my rest. So so let me just let me just conclude this. I need the Holy Spirit in my life because I'm called to be a witness. I need the Holy Spirit in my life because just like those first Christians I want to declare the wonderful works of God in a way that people will understand. I want to declare the wonderful works of God in the language that young people will understand. I want to declare the wonderful works of God to old people in a way that they, they can understand. That's the miracle. That's the miracle of language. Talking to the person that you're talking to. Reaching the person that you're talking to. I want to declare the wonderful works of God to you, son. I want to tell you that God is a friend that will never leave you or forsake you that God will bring you whoever battle of life, that when you're old, you won't feel old. 
Oh, there'll be days you might feel old, but you won't be old. You'll still have the strength of God in your life. I want to declare to you the wonderful works of God that He will do things in your life that you never dreamed or imagined that never even entered into your mind the things that God will allow you to do. I want to declare to you the wonderful works of God. Peter was a fisherman, a big, dumb fisherman. Pardon to the fisherman. Apologies to the fisherman. Peter was just a simple guy. But God used him to become the, oh, I mean, to become the great spokesman, the great man of God, who his voice reaches down to us over 20 centuries. And we hear Peter standing up saying, well, don't be amazed at this. They're not drunk like you suppose. This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. Amen. 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 So I just, I need, I need, the, I, what came to me this week, there's a, there's a poignant passage of Scripture over in Galatians. You that began in the Spirit, you that began in the Spirit, that's how I started following Jesus. My Spirit was reborn. You that began in the Spirit, are you going to finish in the flesh? I don't think so. No. We want to be renewed in our inner man. And we want to realize we're all not going to be the same. Some days we'll be really quiet and subdued and orderly because that's what God wants done. Some days we'll be joyful and we'll, we'll just shout and shine for Jesus. Amen. 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 But when you're at Kroger's, that's when you need to be walking in the power of the Spirit. Yeah, because see, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit because you want to walk in the power of the Spirit. And when you walk through Kroger's or when you, when you walk through uh, um, Lowe's or you walk through the Olive Garden, wherever you're walking through, you want to walk through it in the power of the Holy Spirit. And you want to know that you are God's person there. God has you there. And it just may be you're going to turn a corner and there'll be somebody. I, I met a lady in Kroger's the other day and, and somebody introduced me to her and she took me by the hand. She goes, Whoo. She said, What was that? I said, That's a Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Greater is he that's in you. Because you see, Jesus said, Jesus said, He'll be with you, stand alongside of you, the paracletos, a straight stick that you can tie your life up to. He'll be with you. And he'll be in you. Hallelujah. Won't you lift your lands? Lord, fill me with your Holy Ghost of fire. I don't have to be like Brother Bill. I don't like have to be like Dosey or Kathy or any of... Any, uh, you don't have to be like Janie. I mean, there's nothing, nothing wrong with Janie, but you don't have to be like Janie. You don't have, all you have to be is yourself. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Loving God. Loving your neighbor. A word on your mouth saying... I, He's a present help in your time of trouble. Oh, I know you're going through the fire. And I know your emotions are jerked around. I'm not talking about you, sweetie. I'm talking about you talking to somebody. And you can say, but he's a present help in the time of trouble. And there'll be a soothing quality. There'll be a reassurance to your words. Because it's the Holy Spirit speaking. It's not you speaking. It's the Holy Spirit speaking. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Last thing I thought about is I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so I can walk in wisdom. Now, if you read Ephesians 5, and I'm not going to do it for you. You can do it yourself if you're interested enough. But if you read Ephesians 5, where Paul talks about, don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's verse 18, Ephesians 5, 18. If you read that whole chapter, read chapter 5, read on into chapter 6. And you'll find out that there is a, it says that you can walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. And it tells you, it tells you the things that you can be wise on. And young people, I thought about this. Yesterday my heart broke when I thought about some of the times that as a young person I wasted those times. It says in verse 16 of Ephesians 5, it says redeeming the time. You can be wise enough not to waste any time. God can help you to be wise enough not to waste any time. 
Not to waste one second. You can remember your Creator in the days of your youth. You can be wise enough not to waste one day. The Holy Spirit will make you wise enough not to, not to waste one day. The Holy Spirit will make you wise enough to understand the will of the Lord. It will make you wise enough not to get drunk with wine or anything else that will make you drunk. It will make you wise enough to worship. Wise enough to always be thankful. Wise enough to love your wife or your husband. Wise enough to be washed by the word. Wise enough to not provoke your children to wrath. How many children are angry because their parents aren't wise enough to keep them from being angry? Wise enough. Wise enough to stand against the wiles of the devil. Wise enough to withstand evil and the wicked. And it goes on. That's a sermon all by itself. I better preach that one again. Hallelujah. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know how you, you know, you, there's so many ways you re, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're filled with the Holy Spirit by asking. That's what he said in Luke 11. How much more will he give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If, if you never ask for the Holy Spirit, chances are you're not going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're filled with the Holy Spirit by reading the Word of God diligently. By, in fact, Ephesians 5.18 correlates with, with Colossians 3.16. In, in 5.18 he says, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit, and then he tells you all these different things. You know, sing, make song, you know, making no, joyful noise, and being wise, and all these things. It's the same passage in Colossians three, he says, "Read the Word of God and do all these things." If you read the Word of God, if you read the Word of God seriously and diligently, you'll be filled with. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You read the, you know, so you can ask, you can read the Word of God, you you can you can worship the Lord. You know, if, if there's so many ways to be filled with the Holy Spirit, so many ways to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you just got to be filled. You got to ask, Lord, in my old age, I don't want to be a dried up wineskin. In my old age, Jim Sawyer, in my old age, Jim Sawyer, I want to be supple. I think that's the way you say it. I want to be, I want to be flexible. I want to be bendable to what He wants me to do. Yielded to Him. I want to be filled. 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 I want it to come out my ears. I want it to flow out my eyes. When I speak, I want the Holy Spirit to speak. I want to be directed where I go. I go by the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, that's enough. Let's stand together.